What's up, everybody? It's your favorite third time's a charm, favorite nerd. And today we are looking at the final installment of the final victory, Mighty Three Mighty Warriors Hummer, so to speak, which is their brawn. I really want to have kind of a more involved final thoughts for this one, so I don't want to waste too much time on the introductions. But I did get this set from East Coast Toys as a loaner to look at, to review, and then subsequently send back. A link to them will be in the description. Give them a look. Tell them Scully sent you. Let's talk accessories. So he comes with a pistol, uh, not great sculpt work, it's fine, it's very simple, and a 5mm peg, which he holds just fine. The gun can fit up here, but you gotta put a lot of pressure on it and it ends up pushing a lot of the panels out, but as you can see, it'll fit. He comes with these two additional pieces. You got the famous screw that was used for, so to speak, during the G1 season one. And then the piece that he used, I think it was when they were in the water that was on fire, like the oil had gotten into the water. I think so, not sure. But there they both are. They're both, this one's sculpted very well, this little tool here. This one's sculpted well enough for what it has to do and they're both just gray plastic. With the hand pushed in, you can just slide this bit in between these two grooves on each side. The drill will also work. I called it a screw earlier, did I? Good grief. The drill bit will clip on here with tension inside the grill, and then you can kind of slide it where you want it, so that's pretty cool. And the same goes for the other bit, just in case. Gimmick-wise, you'll all be relieved to hear that he does have a normal head. So he doesn't have to be stuck in that spot forever, which is so pleasant. Let's see if we can't, there we go. Much better, because I was concerned. So you just pop the helmet off, switch it around, put the helmet back on. Let's talk about the figure. So the head, the face is painted silver. The eyes are painted that metallic blue. That's on both sides. We'll try to get this backpack out of the way so you can see the engineering here. We have a hinge down here inside the collarbone that comes up to a ball peg in the head. You don't get much out of the ball peg, but you get a little bit up, you get a little bit down, you get a swivel, it's very tight. Uh, once again, a tolerance issue. This backpack doesn't really plug in properly. Quick correction. Uh, there is a way, which is good because I was concerned because it seemed less than for sure. But you just have these little hooks and they will come around and tab into these little side places here and here. Uh, and that will keep it kind of locked in place. And I don't have it quite right, but there. We have decent enough sculpt work for the face and helmet. This is die cast here and this is painted. There is a waist swivel, so that works. For the arms, you actually get a bit of a butterfly joint on a swivel at the collarbone to shoulder. And then for the shoulder itself, you get basically a universal joint. So this comes up to about there and then on a very soft, poor tensioned ratchet, you can get it all the way around. We do have some black paint on the shoulder. So fairly well articulated. Bicep swivel. Single jointed elbow that gets you 90 degrees, wrist swivel. I just want to check the tolerances real quick on the other one. Okay, so they're about the same. We have black paint down here on the pelvis, and then we have little tiny hip skirts that we can get up. For our universals here, which are ratcheted, you get out to the side for the full Van Dam, forward and back for the full Monty, pretty much. Thigh swivel. Uh, this has the same kind of universal joints that are a little loose, where right? you can pull against the teeth of the ratchet. Now, the knees. So the knees are on a single tensioned hinge that gets you 90 degrees, and they're very tight. Where the knees in this in the the lower leg meet, it has to come apart for for transformation. This one plugs in just nicely and sits super flush. This one doesn't really. And with the slightest bit, it like pops out of location. Listen, you can probably even hear it. You see, it's just not, it's just not a tolerance. It's just not tolerance properly. We do have the translucent windows down there and some silver paint, which doesn't really bother me, but I can see how it could bother some. Same for the feet. Now, for the ankles, I wanna make sure I get this right, but I'm not sure I will. I don't see a tilt down or up. But we do get a rocker at the toe, which will hide everything, so I think that's fine. Die cast hubcaps, that, those look quite nice, I think. And then 
the back. Ooh. Size comparison wise, there he is next to the bad cube brawn. Now obviously he's a lot cleaner, a lot more G1 accurate, there's no doubt about it. There's actually elements of it sculpt wise that work a bit better for me. There's still things about the build of this one that are far better, but that's a different conversation. Size wise though, he's much more of the taller variety, and I'm not sure how I feel about that as much, whereas this one kind of feels squat like I imagine him to be. But let's see how they both scale with the other two we've been looking at. And hopefully that gives you a, a bit of an idea, you know, and scale is in the eye of the beholder, but he seems a little on the tall side for me as well. All right, so let's get him transformed. Make sure your pins are lined up. You want to collapse the hands and then collapse this, but it wants to keep pushing down on mine and they're supposed to be flush. So we're going to do it again. We're going to collapse the hand because you're trying, I got to get the bicep up in there. And it's just... You see, mine's like stuck. There it is. Nope, can't get it. I had to do it off camera. Finally got it. I, like I just had to show, like it's like just too tight. That's a tolerance issue. It's something we keep coming back to. All right, so unplug this, put your hooks back, and then you've got to make space because you got to get his head tucked into that little cavity there. So now that that's done, the double hinge here on the back you want to spin around and then bring this to the front so that you have these two pieces but we need to unfurl a lot of this stuff so bring these two side pieces out now as you can see this piece is missing and this just came apart now this piece is missing because it just came off while I was messing with it so let's put that back on and then it's sitting in a mush there's a mushroom cap basically that goes into the yellow piece Oh, for crying out loud. Uh, all right, we're going to do it later. We're going to put this. That's where it goes. You see the yellow piece came forward, so we're just going to tuck it in. We're going to close the yellow piece around. This will sit up there. Now, this piece, you need to make sure that these side windows are open here. And this back piece is open because this back piece ends up being the back of the vehicle. And you can bring that down, and we're going to bring the arms up to get it underneath. And we're using the butterfly joint to make that to make that happen. So, just as a heads up, I went to push this piece back in off camera, and I cracked it. So be careful. All right, we're going to spin the waist 180 degrees. We're going to open up these legs. Now, you basically just have to unfurl all this stuff and then build the side of the truck. So the double hinge needs to be straightened before you make the turn. There's also this heel spur here in robot mode that you can use. I didn't mention it. I forgot about it, honestly. The, the fact of the matter is I haven't noticed a need for it. He's, he's pretty well balanced, but it is there. And then we'll do the same on this side. Bring this around. We have to undo that hinge before we make the turn. Open all of this up. Expand the waist, and that should give you the clearance for this to come around and fit in this area and it just takes a matter of maneuvering it I'm gonna show you the basic way to do it and then you know you can do it on your own time and I'll do it on my own time but these come around like this this sits down in the front you see like there's a lot that kind of needs to line up and everything but once you have it like in position the only thing that you kind of need to be cognizant of are that these pieces here slide forward. And the rest of this stuff, we're just going to tab in uh, in place, roughly anyway. And then I'll, you know, of course, I'll clean it up. And I get this down here and those peg into the top there. There you go. So there he is. We'll bring out the side mirrors. And I think it works pretty well. You know, it's definitely in the right ballpark anyway. Rolls all right. We got rubber tires. And not a whole lot of paint accents come through in, in truck mode. And then, of course, you know, there's this bit that's a problem. But other than that, it seems to have worked fairly well. And I think it's pretty efficient. Uh, I don't really have any real issues. It's, it's, 
All their vehicle modes are a little cartoon, which is interesting because I don't feel like we've seen a whole lot of that, like hyper cartoon looking vehicles. And not to say that this one is super cartoon, but like the Huffer really felt like the cartoon to me. And this one feels exaggerated. Like it doesn't feel like a real vehicle. You know, it doesn't feel exactly like the cartoon either, but it doesn't feel entirely real world accurate. There it is next to Tiger Tracks. Final thoughts wise, let's talk about the negatives. Tolerances, once again, plague this company. They're an issue. There's no way around it. And this one, and perhaps worst of all, because I had pieces popping off all over the place to include the front bumper, the headlight. The headlight then broke on me when I went to get it back into place. So there's a lot of issues. Also where the hood tabs in, I have a significant stress mark as well, which I'll try to cut in here. It's right there. But those sorts of things come from weaker materials and poor tolerances, which the materials don't feel necessarily bad on these guys. Some of the hardware does, especially on this guy and Huffer, but the materials don't seem excessively bad. They're not great either. You add that in with the tolerances and you're going to have issues like these stress marks which we've seen on two out of three figures and it makes me want to look over Huffer a little bit more closely just to make sure I didn't miss anything. I'm willing to guess that I did. The tolerances also affect the way that the robot mode cleans up because I can't get the one leg to sit quite right and honestly those would be my only complaints. Positives wise, there's decent sculpt work here. I do like the engineering. I've, I've kind of enjoyed the engineering on all three of these guys, honestly. Even if they've given me problems due to tolerances, they're still kind of enjoyable. He's pretty much fully articulated. A couple missing points, but for the most part, he's fully articulated, as all of them have been. Sculpt is good enough. The materials feel better than you would expect. The accessories are all integrated. And of course, the price. But I have to say, he's probably my least favorite of all three. Even though he has some extra articulation, and even though I probably prefer his character over the other two. So let's talk about the set as a whole. And I think in my Huffer review, I really nailed it. I can't think of a better way to put it other than it's better than I expected, but not good enough to really recommend. I'm surprised they were able to do this at the price point because I would have expected the materials to be worse than what they are. And they're not. The engineering, I would have expected to be worse than what it is. And it's not. The hardware is maybe slightly better than what I expected, but it's right there in the ballpark. I prefer these over the other super affordable budget masterpiece figures like the Big Spring. However, not by much. I think that what these do better than that, honestly, is just a matter of skull and paint, to be fair. But it begs a more interesting question, in my opinion, one that I've been wrestling with in regard to talking about these last couple days. But we're gonna give it a shot. These more budget-friendly masterpiece offerings, should they exist? Should it be acceptable? And I'm not sure how I feel about it. I have mixed feelings. I can see both sides. I can understand that there's some people that perhaps aren't budgeting appropriately and are maybe having financial woes or issues that are preventing them from having what they feel like they should have because everybody in their little groups seem to have them and therefore they feel as though they should have them as well. I can understand that. But my question is, should there be something like this that levels the playing field? Or does it cheapen the entire collection? And I'm not sure. I think it's something worth discussing. Probably not here on this format, but at some point. I've just recently kind of gotten into the quarter scale statue game. And to be fair, I was a little bit strong armed into it. And if they made quarter scale statues at a hundred bucks, which would be approximately one fifth of the lower end, I wonder if that would take some of the allure out of it for me. And I'm not saying, I'm not asking this question as if I had the answer. I'm asking this question because I'm asking myself this question. I don't know. Not everybody has the means to go and buy a Ferrari. Some of us have to buy a Civic. So should they make a Ferrari available at $15,000? Or does that cheapen what a Ferrari is? Now, obviously, comparing a Masterpiece figure, which is about 100 bucks, to a Ferrari is absurd. Well, unless it's the MP44 or whatever it is, that's 400 bucks. But it's absurd to draw that comparison. It's, uh, it's what does my buddy say? Reducing it to the absurd. But I do wonder, should everything be available available at every price point with the intent of fitting into the same collection. And I'm not sure. I'm leaning towards no. I can't really recommend these because they're just not great. I'm not a fan of throwing a little bit of money to knock out three objectives that aren't exceptional as much as I am to throw a large bit of money at one thing that does it exceptionally. That's just my sensibility. Now, hopefully through these reviews, I've given enough information for you to make your own choice in regards to these figures and what seems to fit you best. But just because it's cheap doesn't doesn't mean it's okay. Conversely, just because it's expensive doesn't mean it's well done. But something about this doesn't sit right with me. It's as if the Emperor has indeed got himself some new clothes. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Till next time, take care.